cast. Okay. Big Mountain Trouble. <laughs> I can't. What's up, Brit? What's up, Bandit? Oh, yeah. Just another average day in Roslyn watching paragliders soar over the mountains. You guys want to try that? Welcome to episode four of Big Mountain Trouble. I'm Sean Smiley. This is Britt. Down there choking on a bone is Bandit. So basically Big Mountain Trouble is about me uh, with some unexpected time off. She's gonna write a book. I'm doing it at my, uh, where I live here in Roslyn, British Columbia, waiting for the snow to fall, hanging out with the dogs. Uh, today's episode is focusing on characters. So working in the game industry, I had a chance to work with a lot of great concept artists, animators, modelers. I learned a lot about what their needs were, which was when I would create a character, they would ask me all these questions about backstory. So what I did was I created a template called the DNA, and I'll show that later in the video. And what it did was it dove into the details of a character. Uh, no one's life is simple. We're always carrying around baggage. We always have things that influence our speech patterns, our fashion choices, scars on our body. God knows I have enough of those. So what I want to do is dive into all that stuff and allow the animators, concept artists, modelers to pick and choose from that character's life the, the elements they would use. So now when I'm writing Slice, I have quite a large cast of characters. Uh, the reason it's a large cast is a lot of people die in this book. There's quite a few big epic moments of conflict with dragons, Nazis, uh, weird goblins, creatures, the War King, uh, all sorts of stuff you'll hear about soon. So what I ended up doing was creating quite a big cast, but my main focus has been on the two key characters, Saga, who's a female special forces soldier, and Heath, uh, a civilian, he's a mountain guide. And what I love about writing is when you get to do research. In fact, I love it so much that it it's, sometimes derails me. But the research on these two characters was a blast. Uh, I was in the military, uh, so I know a fair amount about process and gear and all that, but she's a special forces soldier, so I got to dive really deep into the gear and the, the, the history and all that stuff. It was fantastic. For Heath, well, I live in the mountains, and I'm an avid skier, mountain biker, snowboarder, all that. So I talked to a couple of mountain guides, learned out some interesting things about uh, people they know, uh, personality traits and all that, um, that you know, I found really fascinating, and I've put that into my characters. I like to base my characters off real people, but just on a surface level, and then uh, I definitely make them into my own. So I'm curious about other people's process. Uh, I'll show later in the video my sort of DNA templates. Worked for me for years, full of reference images and backstories and stuff like that. But curious what other people's process are and anything they want to share. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, so here's a quick example of some DNA templates. Just ignore the ski boot off to the side there. So the first one is uh, from a story connected to Slice actually called Montana's Marauders. It's a World War II story. Um, there you can see, just have some, you know, details, background, casting choices, sample lines. We move to the reference images, a couple up closers, Ray Fiennes and Tom Hiddleston. Takes place in the desert, World War II. I used to read that comic as a kid, Commando. These are more theme targets, just trying to capture the uh, personality. Then we move over here. We have this from this crazy fantasy story thing I wrote called The Legend of Ty. This is Fortana Castilla de Vigo. This one has more of a backstory to it. Um, and then we get into all the character references. The references are really for me in these occasions, but you know, a uh, close up of the gear this character wears the spurs on the boots, the the sort of influences, the the henna and tattoos and stuff like that, right down to her war horse and everything like that. But I always kind of start off the same with bullet points, um, get into a backstory, move into reference images. It just you know I like to reference and think when I look at characters and kind of come up with an idea. Thanks. And speaking of backstories, here's a uh, here's Bandit's backstory. 
So my girlfriend and I have had Bennett now for about nine months. Uh, we got her from the Yukon, we rescued her. She was left on a farm, really didn't interact with many people or animals or anything like that. We had her flown to Kelowna, which is the nearest airport, about four and a half hours. Well, the nearest good airport, about four and a half hours from where we are. It was February, I drove out there, got her. But once I got her off the plane, it was too late to drive home. And she wasn't exactly the type of dog you could take to a hotel. I don't think she'd ever been inside a building. So I know the area pretty well out there. And about 10 o'clock at night, I found a forest service road, drove down a couple of kilometers. Found a clearing and me and Bandit set up camp. And she's used to sleeping in minus 40 uh, <laughs> weather and it was only minus 25. So we spent the night sleeping out in the snow. I was about 15 feet away from her. She wouldn't come near me. She was really wigged out. Uh, by about 3.30 in the morning though, I noticed she'd starting to creep closer and closer. It was snowing like crazy. It was pitch black and it was just this white mass coming towards me. Eventually at about 4.35 in the morning, she was sleeping next to me. I got up and I started to make coffee on a little stove and stuff. And she started tugging at my pant leg. And that was it. We've been inseparable since. We played all morning and then I brought her home to meet Laura and Britt. Now the thing about Bandit is, she lived on this farm all by herself, I think. Uh, no other dogs or animals or anything like that. Way out in the middle of nowhere. Then we bring her into town where she sleeps on a couch. She has toys, dog bed. She's basically won the dog lottery, good food, vet visits, uh, spent a bunch of money getting her hair uh, trimmed and fixed because she had bunches and dreadlocks. All of a sudden she went from country dog to not quite city dog, but mountain dog. Uh, she's living in a town where kids stop on their way to school to pet her every day and she's got this kind of great world to explore. Her backstory, abandoned on a farm. Her new story, living in a, a happy, happy little household. So that's her backstory. What can you do with your characters? Bandit, where'd you find that bone? Where'd you find that? Was Timmy in a well? Did you find Timmy in the well and eat him? <laughs> All right, good girl. Just dispose of the evidence. Don't bring it home. And Britt, you just keep quiet. As always, like, follow, subscribe, and uh, please email me.